example, like you mentioned, you shouldn't worry about the expectations of people around you. And you also like give the example earlier of the Korean student. I want to talk about like in the Asian culture, like the Korean student, we usually like live in a family, joint family where generations of family live together, right? Like grandparents, parents, and kids. And usually like senior people in the household love to micromanage the kids decision, the grandchild decision. Okay, you have to go. Like in, in our society, either you are engineer, doctor or lawyer. So how would you say like, and this is like not just common in the Asian culture. This is common at every household, at every race. What do you think like at what extent is that acceptable? Like micromanaging everything uh, of your sibling, of your child's Okay, you should do this, you should go for it. Well, every family is uh, different and yet there are these commonalities. And I wanna be very respectful of family and cultural values that say parents should tell a child what to do. Child should yeah. listen to parents. At the same time, my vantage point is you are a person, not a dog on a leash or some other uh, animal. Yes down the path of life and as a young child you are really on the leash you are taken places by parents you are said don't go there go here they're really steering you and guiding you and at some point that ends at some point we want that to end at some point we become the parent raising the next generation and we're looking after the elders right we don't want to be a dog on a leash forever so you have to ask yourself okay when when am I, given my, my financial circumstances, given my family situation, when am I going to be ready to go a little bit off leash? Okay. Where you're going to, maybe it's 18, maybe, you know, for a lot of us, it's, I need to be financially independent of my family so that I can make my decisions. And if they don't like it, it's not like they can cut me off financially. If you come from people with money, they will try to do that. So what you want to get is more financially independent so that you have the the standing to say you know what folks i love you i respect you i appreciate you and i'm going to go in this direction because this is what makes me uh feel real curiosity and engagement in my work and join you may not understand it but i hope you know that i love you and i know you love me and even if you can't understand it i hope you can be happy for me that I am finding my way. And this is a conversation we can have with greater confidence the older we get and the more financially independent we are. If you are totally dependent on your parent financially, you know, one of the first things they're going to say is, you know, that's all well and good, but as long as you're living under my house, it's going to yeah. be more cool and you need to be a doctor. So if you don't want to be a doctor, one of the first things you need to do is say, okay, where am I going to move to? What kind of job am I going to get so I can pay my rent? so that I can be independent and free and not have to go to medical school just because my parents are controlling every aspect of my life. Oh, love it. And you mentioned now just like you, like you gave a beautiful example of a lease and you, after becoming financially independent and then you become parent yourself and then you do same thing which your parents were doing before. What would you advise to these listeners? Because I mentioned we are like mid twenties, early thirties. We are maybe most of us are going to be married or going to be parents soon in future. What would you advise to us? Like how we can become better parent in future? Well, you want to take your own memory of what you have felt like as a child mm -hmm. and see if you can write down four or five things your parents did that you think was good and four or five things that you would not like to repeat things you'd like to do differently and write those down somewhere where you're going to be able to reference them you know you may say my parents put so much pressure on me to be as this um let's make sure you remember that when your own child is eight or 12 or 15 and you're pushing them because you've decided no i know what's best what you want to do is summon the memory of your own self as a child to bring compassion to what you're trying to do now with your own child. We do not want to repeat these mistakes, particularly these mistakes around control. Um, we've got to get really clear in a philosophical sense that these children of ours are not our property. They're not our pets. They're not our project. 
they're not the evidence of our worth as a human. They are a different human being. They have their own journey. They have their own gifts. They have their own challenges. We're supposed to provide them with food and shelter and love and get out of their way so that they can figure out what am I good at? What do I love? And what do I want out of this life? It's really uh -huh. empathy for our own children when we have them. Empathy based on our own experience as a child who may have been too forcefully handled. Uh, wow. And what would you say like then? We, because at, at the young age, like uh, for our kids, we're going to actually like do manage their where they're going because they don't know that much. But at what age we should start backing up or like now let's have them do their own and let's have them to figure out their own life. Well, Harpreet, it really begins uh, when they learn how to walk. Wow. Um, okay. I actually have a uh, little cartoon on my website um, that I'll give you and you can pop in the link. So my website, julielifcotthames.com, one of my books, How to Raise an Adult, which is on parenting. There's this little video clip that talks about how we begin to teach kids skills. And, um, and the overview says when they learn to walk, they're walking away. And if you recall, when, when a child is learning to walk, um, they, uh, they fall. They're not good at it at the start. Same with learning to ride a bike. They wobble, they fall off. And to overparent, to control would be to always keep your body right next to them so they couldn't fall when they were trying to walk. They would just always fall gently into you and you would just prop them back up or to like hold them by the, you know, this underneath their armpits and hold them so they could walk. That would be overparenting. Uh, they would look like they were walking, but we are providing all of the support and they're not really developing the sense of balance, the core strength or the leg strength in order to walk. Okay, they have to stumble and fall a lot to build the strength. That's a visual metaphor we should take forward into parenting. Every single thing has to be learned in the same way. Instead of us doing it for them, kind of holding on to them and pretending they're walking, getting them to the to wherever because we help them. No, no, no. We need to raise kids who are skilled so they can get places on their own. And so learning to walk, which happens around age one, is really the beginning of that skill development where we don't want to do it for them. We want to make sure the environment is safe. They're not going to try to walk and fall into a very sharp object. Our job is to keep the environment safe so that they can practice the skills. And the older they get, the more, you know, it's, it, it's learned to walk across your kitchen floor to learn to cross a street. They have to be taught to cross streets. Um, they have to learn how to use the stove instead of, oh, I could never let them use the stove. It's so dangerous. Well, at what point do you think your concern about safety will be overridden by the embarrassment that your kid doesn't know how to make a meal? I just met somebody the other day who's still cutting food for her 15-year-old son. And she says, Julia, I know I shouldn't. I'm like, yeah, no, you shouldn't. 15, he should be able to cut his own food. And this is an able-bodied person. This isn't a child who has a physical disability. She's like, well, it's just easier if I do it. And he complained like, you know, hey, mom, cut my food. And I just looked at her like, what the are you doing? You are undermining this kid's chances to be a healthy, thriving adult because you're cutting his food, which is something he should have started doing when he was seven. And now he's 15. What else can't he do? You know, so we it's all along is the point. You don't just start. You adopt the mindset as a parent of a little one. Like, okay, my job is to teach you to do everything. So one day you will leave our home and know how to cross the street, cut your food, tie your shoes, wipe your own body, you know, from the bathroom. Like everything is supposed to be taught to them so they can do for themselves and a kid who's been taught to do stuff along the way will feel more confident in young adulthood. It won't seem so fearful of a place. Wow. And what would then what do you advise to that woman? Like if if it's very hard to the parents to if they can't help it, what can how can they even start with? Because it's just very hard to do that. I mean, let's zero in here on the picture, Harpreet. We have a 15-year-old able-bodied person whose parent is leaning over the dinner table and cutting his food. Okay, it's absurd, right? We can all, I think, agree to that. It's not, it's infantilization. 
you know? Yeah. It's just, it's like, or it's this excessive um, privilege where you, it's almost like, well, I have a limo driver who drives me everywhere and I have a maid who cleans up after me. And now my mother's like my valet who just cuts my food and it's going to stick it in my mouth. What kind of life is that? It's not a life. So what, what I would say is two things. Number one, that parent needs to get right with herself, probably through some therapy about why am I controlling my kid? Why am I acting like my kid is so helpless? She probably feels needed, useful, helpful, which is so important to her that she's going to go for that feeling instead of recognizing, but I'm undermining my kid because he can't cut, you know, things. All right. She's got to get some therapy, good conversation around why am I doing that to my kid? Um, and then I think her kid is also complacent. The kid's like, I'm yeah. just going to sit back while mom cuts my meat. We've got to say to him, hey, kid, yeah, this is all nice and helpful, but just like you learn to wipe your own butt, you have to learn to <laughs> food. And because one day you're going to be out in the world with some friends at a pub, you know, at a bar, at a restaurant, and you're going to pick up the knife and realize, oh my gosh, you know, her, she said her kid, when he, when he picks up a piece of meat, he takes a fork and just puts it in the whole piece and lifts it to his mouth like a caveman. And that at some point, his peers are going to say, dude, what are you doing? That's ridiculous. Cut your food. And she will have put him in that position of being that embarrassed. And I don't want that to happen to the kid. You know, I want him to learn that skill before he leaves home. And we need, you know, hopefully he'll he'll want to learn that too. But if he doesn't, the parent has to put their feet down and say, you know what? I've been cutting your food all your life. It's time I taught you. Or if you feel like, you know, just from now on, you're going to figure this out. You know, you have to put an end to it, hopefully by doing some teaching. Certainly if it's across the street, you don't just go from, I'm going to carry you across the street to I'm going to set you down. Good luck. No, no, no. You're supposed to after doing it for them forever, you're supposed to teach them to do it and then watch them do what you've taught to be there just in case a car comes by and they're trying to cross the street. And then finally they can cross the street on their own. It's really a four step method. First you do it for them, then you do it with them, teaching them. Then you watch them do it just in case, and then they can do it independently. This four step method applies to every single skill.